the parts of the C6. But. Receiver. Feed cover. Pistol grip. Caulking handle. Barrel. Main spring. Piston extension assembly. Now test yourself on the parts of the C6. The parts of the cover, cover catches, catch springs, feed arm control spring, feed arm, fork of the feed arm, outer feed pawls, rollers, plate, pivot arm, inner feed pawls, cartridge guide pawls, cartridge stop. Now test yourself on the parts of the cover. The parts of the receiver, feed tray, actuating stud, locking shoulder, locking cam, locking lever, locking lever link, sear tripper, sear, trigger. Now test yourself on the parts of the receiver. The locking lever link rotates forward and up on its axis, lifting the locking lever out of engagement with the locking cams. The breech block is jerked slightly backwards. The breech is now unlocked. When the working parts are fully forward, the locking lever is down in the sear between the locking shoulder and locking cams. The breech block cannot move directly to the rear, so the breech is locked. When the breech block is moved to the front, the actuating stud follows the feed tray. 
The feed horns on the side move rearward, behind the first round on the feed tray. The actuating stud follows the line in the feeding arms, and the feed horns continue to push the round into the chamber. The actuating stud pushes the feeding arms to the right, which move the pivot group. The outer pawls push the round, and the inner pawls go behind the next round. Once the actuating stud stops moving, the round is in the chamber. When moving to the rear, the actuating stud moves the feed arms to the left, which moves the feeding arms pivot. The outer pawls ride over the next round and settle behind it. When the actuating stud arrives in line, the inner and outer pawls stop moving. The feed horns ride under the first round, moving the actuating stud to the end of its course. When the gas pushes the bullet, it passes through the gas vent, which sends gas to the gas regulator. This sends gas toward the piston head, moving the piston to the rear. Pull on the cocking handle to unlock it. That's followed by compression of the main spring. On releasing the trigger, the sear remains down, but the tripping lever rises. As the working parts move to the rear, the end of the piston hits the tripping lever, which in turn allows the sear to rise and engage in the bent. When the trigger is squeezed, the nose of the sear is depressed, thus feeding the extension. The main spring pushes the working parts forward. The feed horns strike the base of the round, feeding it into the chamber. As the working parts move forward and the round is fed into the chamber, the locking lever is forced down by the locking arms, thus slowing down the forward movement of the breech block. The piston extension, still moving forward, causes the locking lever link to rotate downward and back, forcing the arms down to their fullest extension in front of the locking shoulder. The extractor rises over the base of the round and the ejector is compressed. The round is now fully home. When the round is fired, some of the gas passes through the gas vent into the gas cylinder, striking the head of the piston and driving it to the rear. During the primary movement of the piston, when the breech is still locked, the bullet travels from the gas vent to the muzzle. The breech block, being jerked slightly, is enough to affect the primary extraction of the empty casing. When the breech is fully unlocked and the breech block starts its rearward movement, the extractor withdraws the empty casing from the chamber. The ejector forces it from the face of the breech block out through the ejection slot. The working parts continue to the rear and the return spring is compressed. If the trigger is not squeezed, the sear remains down but the tripping lever rises. As the working parts move to the rear, the end of the piston hits the tripping lever which in turn allows the sear to ride and engage in the bent, holding the working parts to the rear. Provided that the trigger is squeezed, there are rounds in the belt, and sufficient gas is made available by the gas regulator adjustment to cause the working parts to rebound off the buffer, the actions of feeding and firing will continue. You should now understand the mechanism of the general purpose C6 machine gun.